Alright, what's going on guys? In this video we are going to be customizing the Brooklyn theme within Shopify. So this is one of the more popular themes and it's a free theme so I figured I'd go ahead and make a dedicated video just for setting up this particular theme here. So getting started here, if you don't already have a Shopify store uh, set up and you're not already able to get into the back end, you can go ahead and click the first link in the description to start your 14 day free trial and then once you go ahead and do that you can come down here to explore free themes and select brooklyn from this list right here to go ahead and follow along with the video now with that said let's go ahead and jump right into it so first off we're going to go ahead and open up the customize section and take a look at the actual theme so this is what the theme looks like when you first install it so you're pretty much given a complete skeleton here so we can see that this is a pretty visual theme from the jump. We have a very huge um, banner right here. It comes with a blank announcement bar. This is where our logo would be. Here is our menu. We can come down here. We have a message. Then we have some collections right here. We have a featured collection and then a featured product as well as a newsletter sign up. So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is we're going to just go ahead and be filling out the Brooklyn theme completely based on how it comes out of the box. So I'm not going to be making uh, many changes to the theme layout itself. We're just going to go ahead and fill it in the way it is. So before we get started, there's a couple of things that you're probably going to want to have in order to make this process a lot easier. So I'm going to pull up this notepad here. So the first thing you want to make sure that you have ahead of time is a logo. So you want to make sure you have uh, your branding set up so your logo and color scheme because this is the type of stuff you're going to need to go ahead and design your store so if you don't have a logo um, I would recommend getting one or making one yourself so if you want to make one yourself in Photoshop or with a site like Canva that's fine or if you want to have one made I would recommend going to fiverr.com so f-i-v-e-r-r.com and you can get logo designs there for around $50 and then selecting your color scheme so the color scheme that you want your site based around so this is essentially going to be based off of the colors from your logo to keep it simple and then for this particular theme here we're going to need one or two wallpaper photos for this banner image right here and then we're going to need some smaller photos that are going to serve as collections so brooklyn is a very product focused theme so this theme works best for stores that have a lot of different products so if you have like one or two products this might not be the ideal theme because we can see here we're trying to showcase off um, multiple different collections of products so ideally you would have at least five collections right here to go ahead and show off so you're going to want to go ahead and have photos that represent your um, collections right here and then, of course, you're going to want to make sure that you have all of your product photos and product details when we fill out the product pages. So once you have all this information, we can go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do here is open up the header and we're going to get started by putting in our logo here. So once we click header, we can click select image right here and we can go ahead and upload an image. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And in this example, we're going to be making this sample store a candy store. So I'm going to go ahead and click select on this. And then right here, we can choose to make the logo smaller or we can choose to make the logo bigger. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and just make it big. And then right here, we can go ahead and change the color of these links and icons right here. But we can see right now we have transparent header enabled. So what this means is, is that this header is going to be transparent whenever we are on the home screen with this hero banner in the background. So if I were to get rid of this, we can see that it would make this a non-transparent header right here and it would actually be a header standalone and then you can see now the text is actually black and this is what our header is going to look like on every other page so whether it's a product page or anything else this is what our header is going to look like but typically on the home page it's going to look like this and it's going to be transparent so you can choose whether or not you want the header to be transparent or not by enabling or dis disabling it right here. I'm gonna keep it as default. 
And I'm going to go ahead and keep the rest of the links and icons for the other pages as default black as well. And then right here, you can choose to upload a separate logo when the transparent header is enabled. So if your base logo doesn't look good on the um, hero banner that we upload here in a second, you can upload a transparent one instead, which could be like an all white logo or something like that. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and keep it as default and everything else down here. We can pretty much keep as the same. We can see that the transparent um, header links right here. This is where we can change this color. So if we wanted to make the colors red, we could, but in this case, white typically is going to be looking better on the background. So we're going to keep it as that. And then down here, we can go ahead and edit this announcement bar right here. So this is where we can type in pretty much anything that has to do with the store. So in this case, we could just be like, you could put like a sales notification up here, and then we can choose to show this announcement bar only on the home page, or we can get rid of this. And that would mean that this announcement bar will show up on every single page. So in this case, I'm going to make it show up on every single page. So the next thing we want to do here is now we can go ahead and choose if we want to link this announcement bar to something. So if you were selling a particular um, deal on one product here, you can go ahead and link to that right here. But in this case, I'm going to just go ahead and have it just be an announcement that doesn't link to anything. And then right here, we can actually edit the color of our announcement bar. And this is where I was talking about the colors coming in earlier, where you want to make sure that you have an actual color scheme set up. So in this case here, we could try and match it manually to our logo, but we don't want to do that. What we want to make sure we do is actually match out the color scheme exactly. So in this case, what we need to do is find the actual hex color code of our image and we can, of our logo. And if you don't already have that information, there's two ways you can do it. One is you can go ahead and pull up your logo in Photoshop. And two, if you can go ahead and use a site called Hex Color Finder, which you can find by Googling Hex Color Finder and then clicking on HTML color codes.info. And then if we open this up, we can upload our logo here. And then if we just click the color on it right here, we can see it gives us this color code right here. And then we can copy this, come over here, paste it in. And then we can see now that these colors match up perfectly. And you want to keep this code handy because you're going to be using the same color scheme throughout the rest of the actual design. So at this point, we've set up the header. So I'm going to just go ahead and click save. And you're going to want to save periodically to ensure that you don't lose any progress. So I'm going to go ahead and click back. And before we actually get to customizing the rest of this, what I want to do first is go down to theme settings right here. And we want to change a couple baseline settings now that we have colors and everything decided on. So first off, we're going to click on colors right here. And what we want to do is change up a couple of these colors to match our branding. So most notably, if we scroll down here, we want we don't want this link color to be this random brown because that has nothing to do with our branding. And then we don't want the buttons to be black because that has nothing to do with our branding either. So we're going to come down here. And first off, come to buttons, and we're going to make the buttons the same color that we used earlier. And then we're also going to change the links and accents here to the same color as well. So now our links are going to be the same reddish pink that we've been using throughout the rest of the store. And then I'm going to come down here and change sale tags to completely red just because red is typically a color that is associated with sales and then we can come down here to the drawers section as well and we're going to change the button color to the same color scheme of our store as well and at this point now our color scheme is set up store wide so we're going to go ahead and click save and i'm going to go ahead and go back once again and the next thing i want to edit here is the typography so we can see here that this font looks fine but it doesn't really fit with the branding of the uh, candy store so maybe you want to choose a different font that actually fits with the branding of your store so if i go ahead and click change we can see here we can look through a bunch of different fonts and you can choose one that you think fits well with your actual branding so in this case i'm going to go with the beefcakes font for the headings as this looks a little bit more like 
a fun type of font that is befitting of an actual candy brand here. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is click select. And then we can see right here, that is for the headings font. And we could go ahead and change our accent text as well. So this is going to be menus, buttons, and slideshow headings. So for this one, I'm gonna use something more basic. I'm gonna just go with cabin. And I would recommend not using too many different fonts because it can definitely uh, slow down your website if you have a bunch of different fonts going on. So the last one here is the body text here. And for the body text, I'm actually just going to go ahead and use cabin as well. And then I'm just going to click select and click save. So at this point, we went ahead and customized our typography. So at this point now, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go back and we're gonna start actually setting up this actual theme. So when it comes to editing any theme within Shopify, there's always going to be an element over here that corresponds with the actual element on the page. So if I were to click on the collection list, that would take us down here to this collection list. And if I click back on the slideshow, it'll take us back up here. So we're gonna go ahead and work away from the top down. And first I'm going to customize the slideshow. So we can see by default, that this slideshow comes with two slides. Now, to make it easier, normally you really only need to have one slide. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the second slide, come down here and just click remove block. So now we're just gonna have one static image showing as our homepage slide. So in order to fill this in, I'm gonna click on slide and then I'm gonna click select image and we're gonna go ahead and upload an image right now. So now that I've uploaded that image, I'm gonna go ahead and click select. But now we can see that it is kind of difficult to see the rest of the stuff on top of this homepage slide. And that is because the opacity here is too low. So if I take the overlay opacity and raise it to say 45, we can see that now it makes the image darker and it makes everything else on top pop a little bit more. So if I raise it up to 50, we can try 60. And you can play with this to see what you think looks best. Now, this is why, like when we were looking at earlier, why you can have a separate logo here for the transparent header, because if you had an all white logo up here, it would stand out a little bit more. But in this case, since we've put the opacity up to 60, we can see our logo in the menu and everything, and everything looks fine. So now what we can also do is we can edit the image position. So right now it's essentially centered, but you can make it the bottom right of the image or the top left of the image but in this case i'm going to keep it as center because normally that's going to be the most common thing you do and then we can edit our text alignment here so we can make this text on the left on the right or in the center in this case i'm just going to keep it default and then we can edit our heading right here and we can edit the subheading right here that is on top and we can edit, customize this to fit our branding right here. So the next thing we can also do is add in a button right here. So we can see by default, there is a shop now button label, but there is no button showing up. And that's because we don't have a link to anything. So if I click on this button link, and let's say I just want to have it link to all products, we can see that this button is now showing up, but this button is not the same color of our other buttons. So we want to go ahead and change this button color to the same uh, pink that we've been using and go ahead and click save and just like that we've went ahead and designed our first slideshow so at this point now we can come down here to the rich text section so in this section here we would just go ahead and open it up and in this section we can go ahead and put anything we want so in this particular stage case we could put something like our story and we could go ahead and type a little bit about our store and how we got started how the business got started and you can put any type of text here you want so in this case i'm not going to actually type something out to keep the video short so i'm just going to go ahead and put in some example text right here and we can go ahead and change this size from small to medium to large so in this case i'm going to go ahead and just keep it as large but then we can go ahead and check wide display if we want to make it wider and i think that looks a little bit better because if it's not wide this text is too blocky so i'm going to go ahead and keep this on wide display go back and click save now unlike with a lot of other shopify themes here 
like I said, Brooklyn is very product focused, meaning that a lot of the stuff that's going to be on this homepage is actually going to come from different products and collections that we have. So at this point, we can see we have the collections list. So in order to fill this out, we need to actually create some product collections. And then we have a featured collection here, which means we actually need to create a collection with six products in it. And then we have our example product right here. So in order to go ahead and fill the rest of this stuff out, we're gonna have to go ahead and actually start creating products and collections. So let's go ahead and leave this right here and come back to the Shopify homepage here. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is head over to products. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually add our products into our store. So we can do this by coming over to all products, clicking on add product here. And I'm going to go ahead and add a product in now. So let's say the first thing I'm going to go ahead and add is going to be a Milky Way candy bar. And we can see we just put the title of our product in right here. And then right here we can go ahead and do a brief description of our product. In this case, I'm going to just use some dummy text. But we can go ahead and put in our product description right here. So this is where you want that information from earlier. And then as well, we want to go ahead and be able to upload product photos. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So you're typically gonna want more than one product photo depending on what you're selling. So if you have more photos, definitely be sure to upload multiple. And then we can come over here and we can change our product type. So in this case, the product type is going to just be candy bar. And then we can change a, we can put in the vendor of the product if we want to. In this case, I'm just gonna keep it blank. And then we can go ahead and add this product to a collection if we want, but we haven't created collections yet. We're gonna be doing that next. So I'm gonna just leave that blank. And then we can add some tags if we want as well. So in this case, I'm gonna do candy bar and Milky Way. So you just wanna put uh, a couple tags related to what this particular product is. So that way if people search for products on your store, uh, this will show up. And then we can go ahead and just put the price of the product right here and then if we wanted to make it on sale we could just make the compare at price a bit higher and down here you don't actually have to put in the cost per item this is just something that helps you calculate profit margins we don't have to do this so i'm not going to do it right now and then down here we can just go ahead and put in how many we have in stock really quick put in the item weight and at this point we can add any variants but in this case we don't have any variants and I'm just going to go ahead and put this as active and click save. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to do the same process once again. And I'm going to add in some more products so that way we can go ahead and fill out the store. So I'm going to add these products in really quickly. And I would recommend you do the same and I'll be right back. All right, guys. So I went ahead and added some products in now, as you can see right here. So once you've went ahead and added your products in like this the next thing we need to do is go ahead and create our collections so that way we can go ahead and finish this home page so i'm going to go ahead and go here to collections now and what i'm going to go ahead and do is click create a collection so collections are essentially just going to be groups of your products so different categories that uh products that have shared characteristics can go into a collection so in this case I'll make a collection called candy bars and we can go ahead and fill out a description of the collection if we want. In this case, I won't, but I am going to ensure that I add a collection image because that's what's going to end up showing up right here. So I'm going to go ahead and upload an image for the candy bar collection really quickly. And then what we can do now is we can select the collection type. So we can first either add products to this collection one by one manually. So if you only have, you know, five or 10 products in your store, this is probably the easiest thing to do. But if you do have like hundreds of products and you're gonna be adding a bunch of new products in the future, then using automated rules is going to be a lot easier. So in this case, I'm gonna show you how to do it using automated rules first. So we can go ahead and create a collection that's going to have all products that meet a specific condition. So in this case, we can make the condition based off of the product title the product's type, vendor, price, tag, weight, etc. The easiest one to use is a product tag. So any product whose tag equals candy bar is going to be 
in this collection and then i'm going to go ahead and click save and once this saves here we can see that it went ahead and added all of our candy bar products inside of this collection automatically because each one of these products had the candy bar tag so now i'm going to go ahead and go to create another collection real quick and in this case i will make one for candy canes and this time i'll show you how you can do it manually so if I go ahead and upload the collection image for candy canes really quick and then I click on manual and then I click save, we'll see here in just one second, we will be prompted to be able to add products manually into this collection once this loads. So now we can see here, we can go ahead and browse all of our products and we can add all of our candy cane products to this collection, which I'm going to go ahead and do right now. So this is added in here. It's automatically saved and we can go ahead and go back and we can see that now we have two collections. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna create a couple more collections to make sure that we have the necessary five to fill out the rest of the theme. So I'm gonna create three more collections and I'll be right back. All right, so I went ahead and created the other three collections and now we are all set to go ahead and finish our design on the Brooklyn theme. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back over here to the editor real quick and since it's saved, I'm gonna click refresh just to make sure it has all of the updated information that we have just added. And I'm gonna come down here to the collection list. And this is where we can go ahead and start selecting our collection. So we can see right here, we can go ahead and click on this collection and we can go ahead and select collection right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and select candy bars and then we can click select. And then we can go back and we can click the second collection. I'm going to go ahead and add another collection in here. So in this case, candy canes. And for the last three collections, we're just going to do the exact same thing. We're gonna put in every one of our collections once again. And we can see that just like that, we have went ahead and filled out the collection list because pretty much all of the legwork was already done by creating the collections. So once the collections are created, we just go ahead and put them in right here. And we could change this heading to something else, to our favorite categories or anything like this. And then we can go ahead and go back and click save to update this. So now at this point, we need to go ahead and put in our featured collection. So this would be uh, like our most popular collection or just whatever collection we want to feature right now. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and open this up. I'm going to click select collection and I'm going to feature candy bars this time. And we can see right here, if I click select, we can change the grid style from grid to collage if we want. But in this case, I think grid looks better. So we're going to go ahead and we can edit this title right here. Or we can just keep it as featured collection, which I'm going to keep it as right now. And I'm going to click save. And we can see right here that now the home page is looking a lot more complete. And we can see that all of our products from the collection are going to auto populate right here. And the last thing we need to do now is pick a product here to showcase. So I'm going to go ahead and click on featured product here. And we can click select product. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use the lollipop as the one to showcase. And maybe you wanna showcase something that's on sale or showcase a new product or whatever. We can go ahead and do that here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click select on that. And these options right here, we can choose to show variant labels if we want. We can choose to get rid of these social sharing buttons or we can keep them there. In this case, I'll keep them there. And I'm gonna go ahead and go back and click save. So now at this point, the last section that we have here is this subscribe to our newsletter section. So you can go ahead and leave this default or you can go ahead and try and give some incentive to get people to sign up to your newsletter. Um, for example, like giving them 20% off their first order. So you can put something like get 20% off your first order by signing up. And this is something that you would want to uh, make sure that once they sign up to your newsletter that they actually do get a 20% off discount code. So you wouldn't want to lie. Of course, you want to make sure that they actually get the 20% discount code here. And that's one way you can get incentivize people to go ahead and to go ahead and sign up for your newsletter. So with that said, at this point, we've went ahead and edited the entire homepage. So I'm going to click save and we're going to go ahead and run through this again. Actually, what I'm going to go ahead and do 
is come over here and open up the online store on a fresh page without the editor and we're going to take a look at what we've essentially created so we can see here that in just under 30 minutes we've went ahead and filled out the entire um, brooklyn theme just as it is out of the box and the store already looks pretty good so at this point if you wanted to do further customization you could so we can see right here that we can go ahead and add sections if we want so we can see how each one of these different things like the newsletter the product and the featured collection are all sections we could add more sections right here by adding in images with text slideshows um, adding in a map or anything like this by default the default setup looks pretty good but if you do want to add in sections you can so let's say i just wanted to add in a video section we could go ahead and link a video right in here if we had like a demo showcase of some of our products we can go ahead and add in the video section here so let's say i went ahead and selected this and i wanted to say put this video up higher i could drag it up here and put it right there and let's say i changed my mind and i didn't want the video i can just open it up and click remove section and it's gone so with that said, that's how you can go ahead and customize and completely design your Brooklyn theme within your Shopify store. So if you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave it a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel for more tutorials. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in another video.